The video that you're going to watch has to do specifically with graphing rational functions, uh, and you should have already written the notes on what a rational function is and how you would graph it. This video will be an example of, of using those notes. So um, there's a few things that you need to do in order to prepare to graph a rational function. You need to find out if there's any discontinuity. That would be created by vertical asymptotes represented by VA, if there are any, and if there are any holes in the graph. Next, you need to see if there's a horizontal asymptote. There can only be one when graphing a rational function, if there are any at all. And also, you need to find out if the graph is going to cross that horizontal asymptote or not. Um, something that you don't have to do, but is, I find to be a good policy, is to find out if there's a y-intercept and to find out if there's an x-intercept. Once you have that information, you'll need to plot various points to see the direction that the graph is going to take in certain spots, and that will become apparent as we do the example. The rational function that I'm using to graph for this example is y equals x plus 2 divided by x squared plus x minus 2. First thing that we need to do is factor the numerator and factor the denominator. The numerator is already factored at x plus 2. The denominator factors to x minus 1 times x plus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is see if there's any discontinuity with vertical asymptotes and or holes in the graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each of the factors in the denominator and I'm going to set them equal to 0, or really what I'm going to say is they cannot equal 0. So x minus 1 cannot equal 0, and x plus 2 cannot equal 0. x minus 1 cannot equal 0. Add 1 to both sides so we know that x cannot equal 1. That means that there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And then we know that x plus 2 cannot equal 0, so x cannot equal negative 2. But since there's also a factor of x plus 2 in the numerator, that factor can be divided by the numerator and the denominator. Some people call it canceled. And there will be a hole in the graph. Instead of a vertical asymptote, there will be a hole in the graph at x equals negative 2. For horizontal asymptotes, what we're going to do is we're going to check the degree in the numerator and the degree, in the, the degree of the polynomial in the numerator and the degree of the polynomial in the denominator. Since the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is a first degree polynomial, and the degree in the denominator is a second degree polynomial. That means that, according to the rules of horizontal asymptotes, that there will be a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now, to find out whether or not the graph crosses the horizontal asymptote, what we're going to do is we're going to take where the horizontal asymptote occurs, which is y equals 0. We're going to substitute 0 in for y, and we're going to see what the value of x will be. If we get a rational value for x, that is where the graph will cross the horizontal asymptote. If we don't get a rational value for x, that means that the graph does not cross the horizontal asymptote. So let's substitute in 0 for x. I'm sorry, 0 for y. We get 0 equals x plus 2 divided by x minus 1 times x plus 2. We can divide x plus 2 in the numerator and the denominator we get 0 equals 1 divided by x minus 1. We can multiply the numerator and the I'm sorry, multiply the left and the right side by the denominator, which is x minus 1. x minus 1 on the left side times 0 equals 0. And 1 divided by x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 1 leaves us 1 on the right side. We end up with 0 equals 1. Since there's not a rational value for x, when we substitute in 0 for y, that means that the graph does not cross the horizontal asymptote, which is really helpful when graphing. Next, we're going to uh, look for an x-intercept. Since the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0, there will not be an x-intercept. And we know that because the graph does not cross the x-axis. Now, for the y-intercept, we're going to set x equal to 0, and we're going to solve for y. The y-intercept will be at the point 0, comma, whatever that y-value is. So we put 0 in for x in the numerator. We put 0 in for x in the denominator. We have y equals 0 plus 2 divided by 0 minus 1 times 0 plus 2. We get 
y equals 2 over negative 2. So y equals negative 1. So the y-intercept will be at the point 0, negative 1. So now what we're going to do is what we have so far is that we've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 as represented by this dotted line. We've got a vertical asymptote at x equals 1, which is represented by this dotted line. We know that the graph is going to pass through the point 0, negative 1, which is the y-intercept. We also know that the graph is not going to cross the, y, the horizontal asymptote, and graphs never cross vertical asymptotes. So we already have a, uh, some good information. We know that the graph is going to, as the graph becomes closer to the vertical asymptote, as, we, as x approaches the vertical asymptote, the graph is going to get closer but not touch the vertical asymptote. And since we know it can't cross the horizontal asymptote, the, the graph cannot go up, the graph must go down. We also know that as x becomes much smaller, becomes, it has more magnitude in the negative direction, we know that the graph is going to approach but not cross the horizontal asymptote. So it's going to do something like that. Now what we need to do is we need to plot a point to see what happens on this side. And remember, it'll approach the vertical asymptote as, as y gets very large or as y gets very small or becomes more positive or becomes more negative. We also know that the graph is going to approach the horizontal asymptote as x gets very large, but we know it's not going to we also know it's not going to cross the x-axis. So one of two things is going to happen. The graph is going to look like this, or the graph is going to look like this. We're not sure yet until we plot a point. And so the point that I'm going to choose to plot is going to be, since we have one to the left of the vertical asymptote, we're going to plot one to the right of the vertical asymptote. And we choose an x value that's to the right of the vertical asymptote. Since the vertical asymptote is at 1, I'm choosing the point 2 to substitute in for x to see what we get as a corresponding y value. So let's do that now. When x equals 2, we're going to find y, so we substitute in 2 for x. In the numerator, we get 2 plus 2. In the denominator, we get 2 minus 1, which is 1, times 2 plus 2, which is 4. The y equals 4 divided by 4, or more simply, y equals 1. That means we have the point 2, 1. So now we've got a lot more information just from that. We know that the graph passes through the point 2, 1. We know as x gets larger, it's going to approach that horizontal asymptote but not touch it or cross it. We know as x gets closer and closer to the right side of the vertical asymptote, it's, the graph is going to get closer and closer, but not touch or cross the vertical asymptote. So part of the graph has that shape to it. And we know that there is a hole in the graph where x equals 2, I'm sorry, where x equals negative 2. We know the graph passes through the point uh, 0, negative 1, and we know it's going to have, as we discussed before, that shape right there. What I did was I did this up on a graphing program called Desmos Graphing Calculator, and I printed that up, so I'll put that up next, and, and we'll go through this again quickly. All right, um, what I did was I just printed out a smoother version of what I had drawn before, and so you'll see, again, that there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. There's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. The graph will not cross the horizontal asymptote. There's a hole in the graph where the x-coordinate is negative 2. There's a horizontal, uh, I'm sorry, there's also a point that we plotted at 2, 1. 
on the right side of the vertical asymptote, we have that shape. On the left side of the vertical asymptote, we have that shape. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know.